Hello, YouTubers. Well, uh, a little follow-up to an Audacity video I did a little bit ago. Um, I did a video where I was showing how time stretching could let you see uh, interesting details and sounds you might not have heard otherwise. But I also uh, did a little thing where I eliminated a bird um, that was in the background of a voiceover uh, sample clip. And I used the graphic EQ as a notch filter. And uh, uh, yeah, brute force and kind of crude, as was pointed out to me in an email from uh, one of my Dutch viewers, uh, Wim. And uh, that's what he says, your notch filter in the equalizer is a bit crude. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Um, it was, like I say, brute force. There's a better way to surgically edit sounds by frequency and cut bits and pieces out of sounds in Audacity, and that's what we're going to talk about today. The reason that I did the EQ notch filter thing was because a lot of my viewers are ham radio guys, and it was just a nice way to relate something that we learn in radio to the audio domain and uh, show how you can use some tools not for what they were intended for to achieve a different goal. And uh, yeah, I, I know that's kind of like a screwdriver to hammer in a nail. But within the spectrograph view in Audacity, you can surgically remove bits and pieces of the uh, audio based on frequency and visually in the spectrogram. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you how it works. All right, here we are in Audacity. And I have my original sample clip that I used in the previous video, which this is it. This would be an example of a typical narration. And you could hear that we have that bird right about here. Of a typical narration which in the original video I removed using the graphic EQ as a notch filter. Up here, if we click on the title for the track and we go down to spectrogram, that gives us a spectral vision of the audio sample. Now this is similar to the waterfall in FL Digi or other digital mode amateur programs. If this was rotated, so this was the top and this was the bottom, then what we see is very similar to what we'd see in the waterfall. Frequency moving out from the zero point. Energy is plotted. These lighter colors are audio energy. And uh, this direction moving to the right is time. So from beginning to end. And it makes it very clear where the bird is. You can see the sh these bright swoops here. Which if we listen to it... A typical narrative. So our bird is right here around uh, 3 to 4K. Over here on the side we have the frequency. And if you want to see more of, of the band here, uh, this only goes from 0 to 8 kilohertz. If I right click on here and I hit zoom out, now we're looking from 0 to 15 kilohertz. And I can zoom out, I think, further? Yeah, so there's 0 to 22 kilohertz. And what's interesting about that is if we look at this swoop from the bird, which is right here, then you can also see its first harmonic, its second harmonic, and faintly there is the third harmonic. So we can actually see the harmonics. Um, but uh, we're going to go back to the original zoom, zoom reset. Now, previously, as I said, I used the graphic EQ, and I just took the sliders for around 4K and brought them way down, and it reduced the audio uh, energy level at that 4K, which, well, we can just do it again. This is what I did in the original one. We go up here, we hit Graphic EQ. Oh yeah, I've got to select everything. Okay, select all, Effect, Graphic EQ. And we'll flatten it, and then we'll take uh, 3.15 and 4K, and we'll drop those way down. Hit OK. And you can see the band where it darkened here, right where the bird swoop is. And that indeed... This will, would be an example of a typical narration. Now you can hear that reduce the volume of the bird. But, as I said, that is a brute force and, as Wim pointed out, crude method. So I'll undo that change. Now, in the spectrogram view, if I take the mouse and I go to highlight and I drag diagonally, you can see that highlighted box. Well, that, what, what I want to do is I want to 
take that box right over where the bird call is, just the bird call. In fact, we've got it right next to each other, so we'll just go ahead and get both of them at once. And what I've done is I've highlighted just that band of frequency. Now I can edit just that band of frequency. And we can also, we can move this box up and down here. Um, we can adjust the ends. I just want to make sure I encompass the whole thing. Now what I can do is I can operate just on that highlighted area with surgical precision. Now I could, uh, I think I could apply the other filter, but what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to effect and I'm going to go down at the bottom of the list under these extra plugins. You'll see these spectral delete, spectral edit multi tool, spectral edit parametric EQ, and shelving, which is a different type of um, uh, EQ. So I'm going to hit spectral delete. Poof! And now the bird is gone. It leaves a black hole in the middle of the audio, but if we listen to it... A typical narrator. Now let's put the cursor back here. An example of a typical narration. An example of a typical narration. So you could hear that the bird call was almost completely eliminated. The harmonic is still there. We could do the same thing for the harmonic. Um, but you can hear the character of the audio change as well over that part. Listen to my voice. It becomes a little hollower sounding with this chunk of missing spectrum. An example of a typical narration. So we did accomplish what we wanted to. We got rid of the bird, but we kind of left that audio hole. Most people wouldn't pick up on that, but some people with sharp ears might. So I'm going to undo the effect. And uh, I'm going to go back here to that spectral edit multi-tool. Apparently I have two versions of it installed. Hmm. Okay, well. I know that I need this one because I'm using a newer version of Audacity here, so we'll use this. And that reduced it. A typical narrative. So I'll repeat that. Control R to repeat the effect. I'll do it a few more times. So now I've kind of got most of the bird out of there, but I haven't com created a complete black hole. Let's listen. A typical narrative. And it might not be as obvious. An example of a typical narration. Yeah, well, it still is. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to leave a hole in the audio where the bird was. But, yeah, you know, it's like I say, people with really sharp ears might pick up on it. But somebody who's just listening to what I'm saying or listening to the narration probably wouldn't. An example of a typical narration. So that's how you can use... Um, the those those added effects for spectral editing to surgically remove bits and pieces of sound in a recording uh, a little bit more precise for sure and like i say we could also get rid of the harmonics in fact let's uh let's go ahead and see if that helps if we get rid of that or, or cut that down as well put that more central oops not too far okay there we go about there. Repeat the filter. Control R to repeat. And I'll repeat it twice. Now let's listen to it. Example of a typical narration. Yeah, so that makes the bird far less of a problem, doesn't it? Uh, so yeah, um, you could use this to remove a, a whine or a whistle or some machine noise that's high-pitched or, or narrow. What about more complex sounds? Uh, let me go ahead and switch over. I have another version of the clip here, and this one has an additional sound that would, might possibly pop up. This would be an example of a typical narration. So there we've got a car horn. This would be an example of... And if we again switch to the spectrographic view, spectrogram, we can see the car horn. It has multiple tones and lots of harmonics. Look at all those lines. Would it be possible to remove that car horn using this method? Possibly, but you're going to have to remove so much of the audio energy drawn boxes around each of those little lines that it would create a very obvious hole uh, in the sound. So it's really only going to work for certain types of sounds. Whistles, um, a whine or uh, you know, a, a consistent hum or pitch or beep or something, you know, that's, that's annoying. Uh, 
Uh, and you don't have to apply the effect to the entire audio clip. You can just, like I showed you, just draw a little box around just the thing you want to affect. So that is spectrogram editing in Audacity. So there you go. Pretty neat, huh? I think it's a pretty uh, potentially useful tool. Um, in my example that I, I showed there, of course, we were removing a bird. But uh, what else might you use it for? You know, you might have audio that you recorded of a speaker giving a presentation and perhaps there was some piece of equipment in the background that was that, like a fan or something that was whining at a specific frequency. You know, you might want to remove that. Or maybe um, uh, you're recording uh, your child's concert and uh, at one point somebody whistled. <laughs> you know, th that'll happen. I remember many... Uh, big events in, in my son's high school years where there was always somebody in the crowd that uh, was was disruptive <laughs> you know and maybe you could use it to, to eliminate things like that so there's, there's there's all kinds of potential uses for it but it's certainly a very powerful thing to be able to edit the sound file in the frequency domain in such a precise way um, as well as being able to edit in the time domain so I hope you found that useful and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.